Hello. So I'm just going to do um, a quick paint tutorial on uh, these inserts. And I'm going to start with the um, America one. So this is great for like Memorial Day, um, 4th of July, and you know, any type of patriotic holiday. So I'm just going to go ahead and use some white chalk paint and I'm going to paint the um, back piece. Um, this does come with a um, optional score line. Um, I didn't score it, so I'm going to have to kind of eyeball it. Um, so uh, it does come with those score lines so, for placement. So I just, um, I just didn't score them. So that's an option. So I'm just going to go ahead and just give it a white base. So this is just white chalk paint and you can use any white chalk paint. This is just Dixie Bell brand, but you can use like the kind that you can get like the folk art brand at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, Joann's. Um, they all have um, some pretty good brands um, at those craft stores. So you don't have to go too crazy on how expensive, um, you don't want to spend too much money on paint. I find that um, some of them are a little bit better than others. Um, I don't know if I'm a big fan of this one. It's just very um, light. So I feel like I have to give it extra coats. So I'm not gonna recommend the uh, Dixie Belle just because it is um, it is really, really light. So you have to definitely do more than one coat. So this is just the, the white. So I'm just gonna go ahead, paint this, and I'm gonna have to kinda grab, the, grab this and get the sides so I can get this other piece here. And I also don't like that it leaves those paint strokes too. So I'm just gonna go through here. And this is probably gonna need another coat. So I'm gonna let that go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move this pumpkin. I'm gonna set that over here. And do the same thing again. And you can paint these however you like. You don't have to do them white. I just kinda like the white um, so it really pops. And I'm just gonna go through, give it a nice even base. And like I said, you're definitely gonna have to use more than one coat on this if you if you use this brand. Um, I know um, I've heard good things about Miss Lillian's paints. Those are really good. Um, I think I might try those. I, think I might order some of those and see how I like those. Um, I'm not big a big fan of the the Dixie Belle. I just feel like I have to give it so many coats. The folk art ones are much thicker, I've noticed, and I only have to usually use one coat. I might switch to that, but it is so thick that um, it gets a little gunked up. So that's the only reason I'm using this is because I'm not getting any of that gunked up feel. What I do like about this paint is that I can dry brush really easily with it because it's not real thick. So here's my two pieces. I'm gonna come back to this one and give it another coat now that it's dry. It does dry really fast. That's one thing I do like about it. So I'm just gonna go ahead. And my brushes are just brushes that I got at Michael's. These are just cheap packs of brushes. You don't have to spend too much money on brushes either. So this is just giving that second coat. There we are. I just want to make sure I don't have any extra on there. I'm going to wipe that extra off. Because I want this, the insert to go in and out really smoothly. I don't want to have extra paint on the edges. Because it, it will kind of get stuck. Oops. There we are. And I'm just going to give this a second coat. And it's a nice day, so I'm just kind of sitting outside in my garage with the door open. Loving this, loving this weather. I wish it was a little warmer though. It's only about 65 maybe, 60 degrees. So, there we are. For May, I was hoping it would be a little warmer than that, but, and my hands are gonna be all dirty by the time I'm done here. Okay, so I'm gonna try to get those paint strokes out. Just give it one last, 
uh, rub those out. Okay. All right. So now that we have our base done, I'm going to actually, I see a little bit more. I want to, I can see it on the camera. So you can always see things better on the camera than with the naked eye, I feel. All right. Okay. So I'm going to just set that aside and I'm going to let these dry over here. I'm going to decide on what colors I want to do for my little America. Let's see. So this just comes right apart. Just take that right off. And these little guys and this. So this is definitely a really simplified version of um, bigger um, files that I have. These are really, really simple. Um, so because it's so tiny, um, I don't have all the little pieces that all kind of puzzle together. These are just ones that layer. Um, same thing with the pumpkin. These all just layer, nothing um, fits like a puzzle. So these are definitely much more simplified versions of the um, of the bigger kind of uh, ones that I have that are shelf sitters and they're also different. So I don't wanna sell the same file twice. So I'm, I'm thinking I wanna do gray for this. I think that would look really pretty. Maybe a light gray. I'm thinking this color would look really pretty. It's called French Linen. I'm gonna give this a try. I'm gonna shake my paints up. And we'll see how we like this. This is brand new. I'm gonna take the plastic off. Pop that right off. And here we go. I like that color. That's really nice. All right. So I'm just gonna grab another brush. Got my clean brush here. Oh, it's starting to rain. Oh, it's starting out a nice day. We're having our annual Lilac Festival today and I was thinking about going to that, but I guess I'm kind of glad I didn't go. Very, very rainy. It was a beautiful day like half an hour ago. So I'm just gonna go through here and just brush this on. This is actually a much thicker paint. This is the same brand, but I'm getting much better coverage on this than the white. So I guess it kind of depends on the, the color you use. So I'm just gonna, I don't know exactly where it's gonna cover. So I like to just kind of cover anywhere it's like where the United States is. So in case my florals don't exactly cover everything. There we are. I just want to dip my brush right in that lid. I think that's a good way to not waste paint. I don't like to put my paints in those little pots just because I feel like you just waste paint doing that. I just dip my brush right in the cap. All right. I think this is pretty good. All right. I'm thinking I want to try an experiment and if this doesn't work out I'll be very sad but we shall give this a try I'm gonna give this a go here I have some stencils that I bought online I have a whole bunch of stencils these are just from Timu I'm thinking I want to get a smaller one that's a very small stencil this one's got a lot of this one's this one be pretty I think I'm gonna use this one yeah, I think this one would be nice. I think I'm gonna try to do a stencil on this. Let's just give it a try. So I'm gonna give that a second to dry. I think a stencil on this would look really pretty. So I bought this, it's called Dixie Bell, Dixie Mud, and it's white. I have never tried it before, I just opened it. And I'm gonna be very daring and try this on the video today without trying this first. I'm gonna grab another brush just, just so I don't mix my paint colors. I just washed a bunch of brushes. And I think I'm gonna use this brush. My brushes are very stained. All right, I'm gonna use this brush. And I'm going to try stenciling and I'm gonna use this thick mud and see how this goes. Wish me luck. I'm gonna try it. 
right here. Let's see how this is. I'm gonna just kinda swish this around, kinda mix it. It's like a little bit weird. It almost looks like plaster. All right, ooh, just wanna see how this is. Cottage cheese, all right. I oh, don't know, it seems kind of weird. Let's try this. I don't know if it's gonna work on a stencil, but let's give it a go. All right, blub, blub, blub. Let's take a look. I'm just gonna like kind of wing it. I have no idea. I'm just gonna tap, tap, tap it on here and see how this goes. I just hope this um, works. I'm hoping I get some cool texture with this stuff. I don't know. I'm hoping we get some cool texture. We shall see. And I gotta make sure I move my fingers without moving this stencil. Give us a try. Hoping I get some really neat texture with this mud. Like I said, I've never tried this before and I've never even tried it on a stencil before. So let's see how this goes. All right, let's take a look. Ooh, that looks really neat. Okay, not hating it. All right. It kind of bled a little bit into some of the areas, but I'm not hating it. It looks pretty neat. So let's let that dry. We're gonna set this over here to dry. And I'm just gonna wipe this off so this doesn't, I'm actually gonna run this under some, I have a helper here who's gonna rinse that brush for me and the stencil so that it doesn't harden. I'm gonna see how that goes. I actually might like to see how that looks on one of these back pieces and see if it gives any texture. Maybe I'll give that a try. Actually, I'm going to take that back and see yeah. how this looks on maybe one of these back pieces. Let's see if it does anything. Let's see, let's give it a, let's give this a shot and see if it gives any texture. White on white. Let's see. I'm going to do this for the um, pumpkin, actually. I'm going to do this on the pumpkin one. Not sure if this is in the center or not. Well, too late. I don't know. Try white on white and see how it goes. Um, I'm actually not gonna put it all over because I wanna glue that pumpkin on. Um, and you're not gonna see the whole thing because the pumpkin's gonna be gluing, glued over it. Let's give it a try. We'll see. All right. Move this down. That's really thick. Grab a little bit more and see how white on white goes. And I'm going to be gluing the pumpkin over this, so you may not see a lot of this detail, but we'll see. See how we like this. I, I did not center this very well, but oh, different. Maybe you'll see it, maybe you won't. Um, I'll move this up so you can see it a little bit. You can see it gives like a texture, different. But maybe when we glue the pumpkin on, it will look different. Okay, definitely different. Alrighty. There we go. I'm gonna just give that to my friend who's gonna wash that for us. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and paint this part. And this is like going to be the the greens that go over the top. And I'm gonna do that with some green paint. So just have to find my green paint. Here it is. This is um, Weeping Willow. Shake it up. And 
and I'm gonna just set this off to the side and grab another brush I'm gonna use a smaller brush and I'm gonna just make sure I don't have too too much on here I don't want to put too much paint on this at once there we go and you definitely want to use a smaller brush for this because you don't know you don't want like these parts to um, get paint on them because you are going to be um, painting those different colors just because this is not one of those puzzle piece ones where you have the options of like putting them together here we are I'm just gonna make sure that I really get those parts here okay and I'm going to keep this brush with that green on it because I'm going to use it again for this. So I'm actually going to do these at the same time. So I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to do these at the same time since I already have this color out. Make sure I don't have too much paint on there. So I'm going to paint these leaves and you don't have to be a great painter. You just have to make sure that you don't get them on the one next to it. Or if you want to just be them all green, absolutely, go ahead. I mean, I'm not the best painter. My hand shakes really bad. So however you want to do it, I'm just going through here and just painting them all green. I'm just going to use the same color green. There we are. There we go. I might do this leaf a different color. I might do it like a darker green, just so it pops a little bit. Because these kind of look like the same kind of style. I definitely want to do these berries a different color. Maybe I'll do them maybe a brown or maybe an orange. I think an orange would look really nice. Or I think maybe a dark brown. A coffee brown would look nice. It'd really pop on that white. Especially when this is going to be hanging down. It's going to be over the pumpkin. Okay. I never really have a plan of how I'm going to paint. I kind of just decide as I go. I don't really mind. So I'm just going right through here and making sure that I paint these here and I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom in so you can see that there we go there we are and like I said you do not have to be an expert painter just do your best I mean a small brush like this is all you really need and I'm doing these the same color so it doesn't matter if they if you get the paint on each other you can do these different colors I'm just choosing to do them the same color. Alrighty. I think that's good. Okay. I'm just going to really make sure I get these other areas. And you're going to be um, overlapping this area with these flowers, so it doesn't matter how perfect you get it. Okay. There we are. See how sloppy I'm being? It does not have to be perfect. I know people like worry a lot about things being perfect. It does not have to be perfect. Okay, so I'm going to get a different color green and I'm thinking I'm going to use this dark green. This is just um, another chalk paint. This is actually furniture polish. It's called, um, or furniture, furniture paint, um, fusion paint. And it's called Manor Green. I think we will do that color. So I'm gonna go through. I don't think I've used this color before. I have to peel the stuff off. I'm getting paint all over me, peeling this off. Ugh. It's like, why do I get my nails done? They're gonna look lousy. <laughs> all right covered in green paint. Uh, I'm gonna grab some paper towel. 
wipe up that lovely green paint. Definitely recommend having some wet wipes nearby. All right. And because I am done using this color green, I'm gonna use that same brush because I don't like having to keep washing brushes. I'm gonna use actually this here because I don't wanna waste paint. So I'm gonna use that little um, piece that I ripped off from the, from the top that I just tore off there. So I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna just keep on using that same brush. Look at that. This is a great brush. These are those same ones. You just get them at Michael's and they are cheap. You can get like, I don't know, 10, something like the 10 brushes from oh, $10, something like that. I don't remember how much I paid for them, but they are very reasonable. So there's my green. And that's pretty, pretty close. All right. All right, so then there's my thistles. I'm just painting the leaves on these thistles. Here we are. Making sure I get these here and there's the little stem. And I'm gonna paint the thistles like that thistle bluish purple color that they are. And I'm not, I'm not getting too, like it doesn't have to be perfect like I said, it's just do your best because you're gonna go over that part anyways with another color. So just do your best. So like I said, look at this, it doesn't even matter. You're gonna be covering this. There we are. Now I'm gonna do this part too. I think this is, I think it's, this part's green. There we are. And then I'm gonna do that, th that thistle blue. I have a really pretty folk art color that I bought at the store. All right, oh, use more of this. Here we go. Looks good. And I think I'm gonna dry brush over the top of this too so it kind of blends it all together and doesn't have to look perfect. All right, I'm just gonna go over that one more time. Okay, I like it. Alrighty, and I think I'm all set with that. I have to decide what colors I wanna do all of these flowers. All right, well, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna grab this color, it's a folk art, um, the chalk paint. This is Blue Radiance, so it's a really pretty, it's a really pretty um, a thistle, thistle blue. Oh, it's very thick. So, I mean, it's nice. The full car paint is really, really thick, but um, it sometimes it's not the best for dry brushing. All right, I'm gonna grab another paintbrush. And I'm gonna grab another small one. I'm just gonna grab another small paintbrush. more. I always like to have a lot of paintbrushes around. And I'm just going to kind of brush in like away from this area. And then I'm just kind of pulling the green in that direction, just pulling that green. There's still like the paint's a little bit wet, so I'm just pulling it. And it's blending those two colors. There we are. 
and I add a little bit more. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. This is the only time you kind of have to be a little bit more precise, um, just because um, those two colors are going to meet. That's the only spot where you're gonna meet. You're actually gonna see where the two colors meet. And I'm just kind of pulling. I really like that blue. I'm just gonna add another coat. There we are. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna dry brush over this too. I might add like a little bit of like darkness along the edges with another darker blue, just to like make it pop. I might even use some art crayons. I think I will do that. There we are. Okay. There we go. Okay, so there's our blue. I really like that color. I am going to set this brush off to the side and I'm going to use a nice coffee brown, I think, for those, for those little berries. I'm gonna just check for my coffee brown paint. I have way too much paint. I actually like this yellow. I think yellow would look really sharp too. I really like, I think I'm gonna go with the coffee brown. And this is called Coffee Bean. All right, I'm gonna just shake that up. And I'm gonna just go ahead and put this cap back on. I may come back to that color. All right, so. And it's fun doing these inserts, like when you're doing two at a time like this, it'll save you a lot of time. I'm just taking a really long time because I'm explaining things as I go, but I don't usually take this long to paint. All right, so I'm gonna do the coffee brown. I'm actually gonna wipe this green off this brush and jump right into the brown. Make sure I get all that green through there. It's a nice brown. All right, so I'm just gonna go through and here's our coffee brown, coffee bean. There it is. And I'm just gonna go through here, do the same thing on this one. And just making sure I don't touch those I've already painted. And that's all there is. Easy peasy. So I'm gonna let that dry. I'll set this over here. And I have to decide on the background piece. So this is the piece that's gonna show through these layers here. This is all one piece, and this is going to show through here. You do not have to paint the whole thing. You only have to paint parts of this. I might just, I might just do the whole thing, just so I know. I should have put score lines on this so you know where to paint. I 
is pretty small. It doesn't, not really using too much paint. The, the video, I'm just gonna paint the whole thing. I would usually just kind of line it up. And you don't have to be perfect about this. This is the piece that nobody's really going to see. Does not have to be perfect. Everybody's always so worried about making sure everything's perfect. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. That's it. Now I'm going to paint my pumpkin pieces next. Make sure there's no paint strokes. Okay, so that one's it. That's all you do for that piece. I'm gonna move that over here to dry. And I'm going to wipe, I'm just gonna wipe the paintbrush off instead of washing it. I'm just gonna use this paintbrush again. I don't like to have to keep washing in between. I just wipe it off with a paper towel. Okay, so here's this piece and I have my orange paint and this is DIY paint. It's Debbie's Design Diary. That's the um, brand. So if you see that, and uh, this this color, let me see if I can find the color. Oh, Summer Crush is the name of this color. I just buy these paints at um, local craft stores. Um, we have like local antique stores and stuff. So. Um, I like to find new paints. I just like to experiment. So um, anytime you can find a cute little shop, check out and see if they have any paints there. I love trying new paints. So I think I have 172 jars of paint. Let me just make sure, there we go. Well, I have too much paint on there. So I'm just gonna go through and just paint this part of the pumpkin and because I still have a little bit of that brown paint on here, it's going to give me a really cool finish. I really like that. I might have a little bit of that, kind of like that antique type feel to it. I don't ever like to clean my brushes. <laughs> it's kind of like what gives a lot of my designs like that antique look. I think because I like to just wipe them off instead of washing them and all that stuff. I just kind of wipe them off with a paper towel and keep on going. There we go. There we go. Really like that. It's a really pretty orange. Just the kind of orange I think is perfect for one of these like folk art style pumpkins. It's like a nice farmhouse style. There we go. And that's all there is. I really like how we're getting with this finish with the brown mixed in. So if you're like me and you don't wanna go in and wash your brush, dirty brushes. I like how the colors mix together. Okay, so that's all you do for this one. That's it. And you know, all you have to do, and then we're gonna layer those pieces over the top of each other. All right, so I think that's all I'm gonna do for orange. So I'm gonna set this over here. I have to come back and decide how I want to finish this. Um, actually, I might do these brown as well. Actually, I might do those, it's gonna be look cute orange too. But I am trying to go for like a red, white, and blue motif. So maybe a red, color for those. I'm gonna do red. Maybe this color. It's pretty red here. It's more of these fusion paints. And I found these at the same antique store. What I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do red because I'm trying to stick with the red, white, and blue. Like I said, I just wiped my brush off from the orange and I'm just using that same brush again. Here's our pretty red. Okay, and it doesn't have to be perfect because you are going to be layering that other piece over the top. 
so you don't have to worry so much about getting it on these flowers here. See, look at that, I just made a mess. What you do have to worry about is getting it on the green we've already painted. And hopefully I don't get it on that. Be very careful. There we are. And there we are. And I think what I'm gonna do for the flowers are like maybe shades of blue and maybe adding a little bit of red to the edges. Just trying to keep to that red, white, and blue aesthetic for maybe Memorial Day, 4th of July. So I'm just gonna set this back down. And I'm just gonna move this over to the sides because I might come back to that. Okay. I still haven't decided on the colors of those yet. I'm gonna come back to that. I might do yellows. I'm not sure. We will see. Okay, so these are the only flowers you're going to have to paint over on this one. It's just these because we're going to take this flower and put it on the top. So these here, um, I think I might do a lighter blue. So I have this blue. It's um, from Folk Art and it's called Patina. So I'm just gonna go ahead, bring this over here. Now I have to use the cap. And I'm going to use this other brush that I had from before. Wipe all that paint off. And just dip it in there. And this, this one's very, very runny. This one's not the best. Um, this one's definitely going to need a couple of coats. I'm not a big fan of this one. Very, very runny. Like you can almost just see right through that. Very, not very opaque. I'm not sure if I'm going to stick with this color just because this just does not seem to be the best color. I might go pick a different one. It's just not working for me. I'm gonna pick a different color. Like I said, some work better than others and that's just not one that I like too much. I might go with this color. This one's um, Dixie Belle. It just says Dixie Belle Blue. All right, shake this up. And, this, and it has a red tag on it because I got this on clearance at um, one of the antique stores when I was in South Carolina. They were discontinuing all of these Dixie Belle paints. So, um, I'm not sure why, but I got all these really cheap. So, that's why I have a lot of this Dixie Belle. I'm not sure if there's what was going on there, but they were getting rid of all this paint. So, all right, let's give this a try. Peel this off. Actually, I'm gonna use that. I don't like to waste paint. Okay, let's try that again. Let's see how much better this one is, if it's any better. Oh yeah, much better. That's covering. That's covering much better. Here we are. It's a really pretty blue. You can see the other one just did not cover at all. Okay. Maybe they're given five and six coats on another one. Just add a little bit more. And with MDF, it tends to soak up the paint pretty quickly, but if you use chalk paint, you usually don't have that problem too, too much. There we are. So you only need to paint those two flowers on that one. Okay, now we have to decide what color to do this one. I'm thinking a darker blue. 
I'm thinking maybe this one is called Antebellum Blue. That would look really nice for like the red, white, and blue motif. I might even do the top flower with maybe a red. It would look really fun. Okay. Ooh, it's messy. I'm just gonna wipe that paint off my brush and keep using that same brush. Just wipe it off on some paper towel. Okay, oh, that really covers nicely. That's a really pretty teal. Love that. I think I might use the same color on the pumpkin. I love that. Okay, I think I am. So I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna move my orange, put my cap on my orange. Actually, I think my pumpkin needs another coat. So I'm just gonna come over here and I think I'm going to use that on here too, because that's really pretty. I'm gonna do that same color. And like I said, I would normally paint these much faster, um, but I'm gabbing. I usually have the TV on and I put something on and I zone out. Alrighty, and I think I might go back to that other blue. I really like that blue. I should have done this first before I put my brush in the other color, but that's okay. I think I do the same thing. That blue is really pretty. And then I think I'm gonna um, dry brush the edges. Maybe with a little bit of red for the pumpkin. A little bit of orangey red. Make them pop. And there we go. Yeah, and my hands are usually really dirty um, because it's full of paint. So don't be afraid to get your hands a little dirty. Brush running out of paint. My neighborhood's kids are giving us a concert. All right. Here we are. There we go. All right. Um, I think I might do this one in that red color. Let's see how we like it. So I'm gonna come over here, line these up. That looks really pretty. So I'm gonna come over here, see how I wanna paint that other one. My hands are shaky. All right, so that's how it's going to be. Looks like when I line things up, I can see that I miss spots. Like I miss these spots here, so I do need to go get that green again. That's why I like to keep things out. And grab that green. Here's my green. And I'm gonna wipe off my brush. I guess they're giving us a good concert. Make sure I didn't put too much paint on here. It looks like this might be part of it too. I'm just gonna go ahead and paint it, just be on the safe side. All right. And let's take a look. I think I want to um, dry brush these edges first. I'm going to wipe this paint off, get 
this brush really, really dry because I'm going to grab some of this red and I'm going to rub some of this red off and get it really dry a little bit more. And I'm going to dry brush these edges. Just kind of like make them look dirty. Here we are. Because I really want these to pop. There we go. Okay. All right. So there's our piece. I'm going to put this piece over the top. Right there. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to do this one red. Grab some more of that red. There it is. I'm just going to move it up to the camera a little bit. There we go. And then that goes right over the top. And then I have to decide on what color to do that center piece. I'm thinking, I'm thinking like a white. That's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna clean this little tiny brush off and just grab a tiny bit of this white. There's our white little piece in the middle and I might even like dry brush around it just to kind of like so it's not so bright yeah I think I might like just kind of scuff it up a little bit with maybe an art crayon <clears throat> but there's our piece and I'm coming back with the other with the America and it looks like it's pretty dry that mud dried pretty quick so I'm gonna grab this and you'll see that you're going to just put it right over that piece here. I'm try to grab this as delicately as I can. And it just lines right up. So there is our America. It looks pretty fun. So I think I might even um, kind of antique this and like you can put like a black edge around it. I think I still might do that. Let's do that. Let's get some art crayons out. I have one ready to go. So I use these art crayons. Um, you get them Amazon, Michaels, any place you wanna um, use these. Um, you can get these, pretty much anywhere has them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna kind of go around the edge. I'll just pull this up a little bit and just add a little bit of black around it just so it kind of outlines it because we do have a, that white background and you want this to pop. You don't want any of the white spots to kind of blend in. So you're just going to kind of get those edges. There we are. And these do set so you don't have to worry about um, them getting messy, like rubbing off. So there's that. Um, you do have some time to kind of work with it. You can kind of rub it out with your fingers or you can get like a, um, a makeup sponge and kind of blend it too. It's really however you want it um, if you don't want that sharp line. So I think I might get my, my makeup um, sponge and kind of blend it out a little. There we are. So now it has a nice black edge, so it kind of pops. You can actually see that there. Or you can even use your finger. 
So it's really up to you. I might just take my finger and just kind of blend it. And that is really fun. I kind of like the way it's like going over the white mud and it's really showing that texture. That's really, really cool. I kind of want to almost just kind of rub the whole thing like right over the top. Like I kind of just want to see. I really like that. I think I'm just going to do the over, right over the whole thing just so you can get that, that texture in there. That looks really cool. That looks really neat. I'm going to add more because I think that's a really neat effect. I'm really excited about this, this mud. I'm excited that I tried it. I'm just going to take my finger and just kind of rub it right over the top. Look at that. Let's just take the, I might just take the crayon and just go right over the top. Look at that. Ooh, that's a fun effect. Look at that. This is fun. Oh my gosh. I am thrilled with how this is looking. That is neat. That is really, really cool. It's almost like, like it's 3D. I'm loving this. This is really, really neat. I'm just going to keep blending it out with my fingers. This is really neat. So these are just like, like stencils I picked up like on Timo. Um, they have stencils anywhere and you can pick up stencils. Um, you know, Michael's, Joann's, any of those craft stores have stencils. So that is really fun. So I think I'm going to come back, try this out, see how I like it. Yeah, that's really cool. I almost want to put some, some like black on the leaves. But I think that's pretty neat. And I lost my little dot somewhere. Here it is. I think I'm going to put some on the dot. I'm going to put some of the black crayon on there. I think I still have some left on my finger. Probably just rub it on there. There we go. There we are. Just kind of rub along the edges so it's not so stark white. There we are. And I'm going to take it and stick it right back on there. That's pretty fun. Okay, so here's my insert and I'm gonna stick it right on there. And that looks really fun. There it is. And you'll just wanna make sure that you kinda eyeball it. That looks about right. Maybe a little higher. And like I said, I did put um, score lines to show you where to put it. That looks really cool. So there it is. And then I will glue that together and this one will be all finished. I might even um, put a little bit of, I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna take my finger and just kinda put the black around the edges, like what I still have left of the um, art crayon around the edge just to like make it pop. There we go. That's a really fun, fun thing. All right. So and I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to just move this. Here we are. And you don't have to use your fingers. You can use, you know, sponges and whatnot. So, all right. So I'm pretty happy with that one. Okay. So let's go back to the pumpkin. And we did do the same thing over here with that. And I kind of want to try it. Um, this looks, we could probably use that art crayon again um, and try to do that same thing. I got some paint on my art crayon. Let's whip off the paint on my art crayon. So I'm thinking I might put some of that along the edge. That looks really cool. I'm gonna do that same thing again. And just kinda 
blends that out. Mm, you can really see that white on white. You can really see that. That looks really neat. I'll just grab some more. These art crayons are awesome. And as I rub on it, you can start to see that texture really showing. This is really cool. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And blend it out. And I'm just kind of lightly rubbing my finger over the top just to make those, those, those stencils really show up. And that's just the mud. That is a pretty fun technique. And I'm not going to do the whole middle because you're really not going to see that. Almost reminds me of like ceiling tiles, like those tin ceiling tiles. This is kind of reminds me of. All right. So, yeah, different. Okay. It definitely looks a lot better in real life. Really cool. All right. So I'm going to just go ahead. And actually, this, this came out pretty good. And I think I might do the same thing. I might put a little bit of the art crayon in between these lines to kind of make it pop. Same thing. All in the edges. And I'm just going to blend that right out. Same thing here. There we are. I just prefer using my fingers so I can kind of control the pressure. All right, so there's our pumpkin. And I'm gonna set this down. Here is our back piece. Here is our top piece. And remember, you're gonna line up the flowers, not the pumpkin, because the pumpkin um, has that extra space around it. So just remember that you're going to see that extra space and that's just to make like a cool 3D effect. There we are. So, so there it is. And then we have our other piece that's going over the top, just like that. Remember, you gotta line up those pieces. So there's our pumpkin so far. And I definitely think this is too bright and I wanna darken this down a little bit. So I am going to go grab the red that we used before. I'm just gonna move my art crayon, put the cap on it so it doesn't dry out. Make sure you put your caps on your art crayons. And I'm going to Grab some of that red. Make sure like you get your brush nice and dry. You don't want to put this on real wet, otherwise it's not going to create that nice dry brush effect. And so I'm just going to come over here, get those edges. Same thing we did on the other one. You just kind of just get it along those edges. Here we are. Might need a little bit more paint. There we go. So there's our 
There's our flower. Set that down over there. Then we have this one here, which I'm going to add a little bit of orange to the edges. Use that same brush again. There's something about these this color with orange. I really like how this pops. Grab some of that orange. There we are. Maybe you can see that. It kind of looks rusty. Kind of gives like a rust, like a patina. There we are. And then I'm gonna just set that over the top. Actually, I like that orange so much that I wanna add some of that orange to this one. I really like that a lot. So I add a little bit of that orange. I really love that orange. If you add a little bit too much, just wipe it off with your finger. I just love that, that patina like texture it gives. I'm gonna just have to blend this out a little bit better. And you can see how it blends. So I think this blue was a little bit too bright. I just don't want that blue like so crazy bright. This is supposed to be a fall file, and you don't want spring, a lot of spring colors in it. Okay, there we go. Now it's nice and dirty, dirtied it up. Okay, there it is. And I can tell that I missed some spots when I was painting, but I think we're okay because we're gonna be putting that piece over the top. Okay, now to decide on the piece in the middle. Actually, I think I wanna do a little bit more blue. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue. Bring the blue right to the edge. Kinda of blends out. Don't think you lose a little bit of the blue. That's why you keep your paints out. And just work the brush towards the edge. There we are. Okay. And then this one's going to go over the top like that now I'm trying to decide what color to do this I'm thinking yellow I think a really pretty yellow would look really nice it can be like this color yellow but not too too yellow I'm gonna go back and dry brush those thistles too I haven't finished those yet I'm just getting an idea of what I want to do for the middle of this flower. Okay. I'll just wipe some of this paint off. Grab some yellow. And here we are. go and I think I'm going to take some of the red and just kind of dry brush those edges not really dry brushing because the brush is still wet but I think that's gives you the idea there we are 
I just think that yellow is a little bit bright. So I just kind of, kind of get those edges. Okay, so there is our pumpkin. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this part off and I wanna go back and kind of blend out these um, areas here. I think what I'm gonna do is, um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the art crayon again. Or maybe not, maybe I will use, I'm gonna do something different. I think I'm gonna use some distressing inks. And that's what I think I'm gonna do. I have, all colors, I have a lot of colors of distressing inks. I think I'm going to use a dark blue. It's like a navy. Are these distressing inks? And I'm just gonna take the top off and I'm gonna just kind of rub the edges so I can get a little bit of like a darker blue along the along the edge. That's what I think I'm going to do. I'm just gonna kind of blend it out with my finger. And now you can see that darker edge. So it kind of get, like goes from light to dark. I'm just using the corner of the stamp pad and I'm just getting those edges. And if you get it too close, just rub it out with your finger. There we go. And I'm just gonna blend it with my finger. And it does dry quick. So there we go. And it gives you a nice, um, like a cool like 3D effect. So that's all you do for the thistles, really simple. All right, I think this one is about done. I'm gonna just put this on here, line it all up just right. Make sure the florals are lined up, not the pumpkins. The florals are lined up. Okay, that will line up your pumpkins perfectly. Then we'll take our flower. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I feel like I didn't get enough on here, so I'm going to grab some of that green and just touch up some of these areas that I think still need more. There we go. I think I missed some of these areas that might show, so I don't want those to um, show. I'm just gonna make sure that all of these areas get nice and filled in, just in case. Okay, there we go. And then we take this piece and just set it over the top. I can definitely still see that that piece still needs more green paint when I line it up. There we go. All right. Setting it down. There it is. I'm gonna go back and get the insert. I'm trying to pick this up without moving it, but I'm just gonna show you for, um, just for our demonstration. I will glue it before I um, do all this. So here it is. I'm gonna just kind of line it back up. And there is our finished pumpkin. So there it is on the, on the insert. And it looks really fun. It's kind of hard to see with my lighting. It's not the best, but I hope you can see that. And I will zoom in so you can see it's kind of like there's a shadow on the side, on the on the right hand side. But if you can see that there, there we go. You know, it's kind of hard. There's bad lighting in here, <laughs> but there you go. I'm gonna try to turn it so you can see all the angles of it. All right, and that's our pumpkin. So I hope I want to set that down on that. But I hope that you enjoyed that tutorial. And I really enjoy painting. It's very um, therapeutic, very relaxing. And I had a lot of fun and I really love that background with the stencils. Um, and that was the Dixabelle mud. So 
All right, we are all finished. And those are two new inserts um, for you guys. And I hope you guys like the new techniques that I used. All right, thanks so much. Bye.